What's going on YouTube? I am B Dobbins FTW and if you ever go to the movie theaters you'll notice almost nobody ever goes alone. On the surface that doesn't make any sense. In theory having a friend there shouldn't change the quality of the experience. The movie isn't changed by their presence. You're not even allowed to talk to each other at the theaters. But we love watching movies with our friends and most of the time if you can't find a friend to go to the movies with you don't go at all. Because as human beings we crave shared experiences and are always looking for an excuse to be around one another. And these are the needs a way out the new exclusively co-op action adventure game from Hayes Light Studios. Studios seeks to fulfill. This game is a fascinating step forward for what has become a very promising genre of video game, the movie game. Hazelight is headed by Joseph Ferris, a filmmaker turned game developer, who with this game attempts to blend both artistic mediums and mostly succeeds. It's important to think of this new co-op title as less of a game than as an interactive movie. There's very little traditional combat gameplay, the majority of the game plays like the kind of interactive cutscene you'd be familiar with from other titles campaigns, though typically with a bit more depth. There's no difficulty setting, and though failure is typically possible, they give you a lot of room for error in the many gameplay sequences and challenges you face. These are qualities I criticize in other games, but it works here because it's meant to be experienced as a movie. The limited difficulty allows the story to progress without constant interruptions or frustration. You can relax, drink, and just sort of get immersed in it as effortlessly as if you were watching a film on your couch. With the added benefit that car chase scenes are much more exciting when you get to drive the car, and that's the primary appeal of a movie game like this. The interactivity can transport you into scenes in ways movies often can't. It's more exhilarating to just barely evade a prison guard yourself than it is to watch it happen to an actor on screen. Your heart beats a little faster. The relief you feel is more vivid and personal. The interactivity keeps your attention more thoroughly than many films can, even during the slow parts that develop a story's exposition, a valuable feature in the era of smartphones. The gameplay stays fresh throughout. No two sequences are quite alike. There's puzzle solving, stealth missions, frantic chases, and a variety of other unique scenarios you play through with always evolving control schemes and objectives. Let her go. Get your hands off her. Die. Get your hands off her. <laughs> It never feels like the story is being shaped to have an excuse for gameplay, rather the gameplay is always built to complement the scenes. Though I should mention that some of the experience, such as having to repair a rundown truck or airplane, can feel a bit tedious in its gameplay and pointless in that it adds nothing to the story's narrative. The action sequences regularly utilize the kind of clever camera angles and techniques you'd recognize from films like Kill Bill or Ocean's 13. And as you get into a rhythm of completing the game's obstacles, you really do feel that sort of relaxed escapism that you get just kicking back on your couch watching Netflix. You can progress at your own pace and take a moment to explore the world around you a bit more in depth if you'd like. You can talk to the other inmates or explore the prison further to add some extra context to the story. They can develop the exposition more thoroughly without it feeling as unnatural as it would in a movie if the characters were striking up conversation with random extras. I can imagine a future where many popular movies are remade in this format. Star Wars versions where you can explore Cloud City yourself and chat with the Ewoks on Endor. The story is always going to be the most important feature in a game like this. A Way Out tells a tale of two prison inmates who for different reasons want revenge on the same drug lord, so they conspire to break out of prison and hunt him down. If this game has one critical error, it's that you escape prison so early on. This game was at its most exciting when you're hiding or running away from the authorities, and they really only scratch the surface of the narrative potential 1970s prison life has to offer. Further exploring the tension between prisoners or the power dynamics between prisoners and guards could have made for a more gripping narrative than what was ultimately delivered. After the protagonists are free, the story devolves into a B-rated action flick. They want revenge on this drug lord, so they track down a known associate of his, interrogate him, and then eventually confront said drug lord, all the while overcoming a range of wacky encounters reminiscent of, you know, the fugitive for 48 hours. It ends with a very fun plot twist that can hit you in the feels, but ultimately it's all very surface stuff. This happens, and then this happens, and then this happens. Both characters love their families, and there's some tension that they aren't paying enough attention to their families during their revenge-filled quest to murder a gang leader. It doesn't get much deeper than that. There's a seriously missed opportunity for some inner conflict among our convicted criminal protagonists. Far from being anti-heroes, they're just heroes who happen to be in jail. They go out of their way to never kill or seriously harm any of the cops that are often trying to gun them down unlawfully. But of course, massacre the gang members without a second thought. Their motivations are largely unimpeachable, except that revenge usually doesn't do you any good, which might be the morale to the story. But with the right person, a B-action flick can make for a great time, and this is the most important thing everyone should understand before they buy the game. The co-op is a central component to it, obviously. It's almost less about the game than it is about hanging out with your friends. 
you shouldn't buy this game if you don't already have a close friend in mind to play it with. I mean the kind of friend you reflexively invite to party anytime you see them online, that you hang out with in Xbox Live parties, even when you're playing different games. This game is the equivalent of, you know, going over to a friend's house to watch a movie. An ancient practice, from a time before Facebook infected us all with crippling social anxiety. The truth is, I don't know how fun this game would have been with a match made random, or even someone on your friends list that you play with occasionally but aren't that close with. It's meant to be played with someone you genuinely feel comfortable hanging out with on your couch for five to six hours. Part of what made my playthrough entertaining was, you know, my cousin Mark's running commentary on the game, his reactions to my running commentary, the entertainment of laughing at someone else's jokes or earning their laughs with yours. In short, many of the same benefits you get out of watching a movie with someone. But it goes deeper than that because it's also working together, coordinating, sharing the satisfaction of successfully synchronizing your actions to get past any particular part, laughing at each other's mistakes and general buffoonery when you don't. It's a conversation piece. It's a catalyst for human interaction between two people. It's that shared experience humanity has chased for so long. It's why we invented Scrabble and Monopoly. It's why roller coasters always have you seated in pairs. A Way Out gives you that shared experience better than a regular movie and better than most co-op games to date. Two people can get through something like the new Far Cry without even having to coordinate that much if they have past shooter experience. It's just, hey, get in the car, hey, I'm down, get me up, or hey, let's do this quest next. In a world where Facebook has turned us into resentful narcissists, where Twitter has sowed such deep political divides that marriages are dissolving, where Amazon is rapidly destroying any necessity to ever interact with another living thing, gaming is that rare bit of technology that's still bringing people together. And A Way Out is a terrific, if imperfect, illustration of that.